Hi you guys, this is Jamie with Whatever's Clever Boutique and today we are gonna make this super cute swirl tumbler for a sweet little girl and I am just obsessed with how it turned out. The purples, the blues, it all just came together so amazing. I will have everything that I use listed and linked in the description box below as well as some coupon codes. We're gonna get started today actually with a tumbler off of Timu because I love the different color handle, lid, straw. It just was so fun for a little kiddo. I prep my base purple and then we're gonna go in with a whole bunch of peach yellow glitters. We have baby violet, petunia, and kyler. And these are all gonna layer over one another. So we're gonna start with a like kind of mini chunky color and then we're gonna go over top of that with a finer cut and then over top of that we're gonna go with an even finer cut and that's gonna really help us blend the swirl together so perfectly I do have a ton of glitters here for you so once I get through all of these you can screenshot that list but ultimately layering glitters like this I find is what gives such a gorgeous blended dimensional look on these swirl tumblers Now we're gonna go ahead and go in with epoxy method here for our glittering. I just find that it gives you a whole lot more working time and really allows you to build up the coverage as you go with the different cuts of glitter. As always with these handled tumblers, I take my time around those plugs, being sure to not get any epoxy in that area so that we have a stress-free handle application at the end where we don't have to do a whole bunch of sanding just to be able to put our handle back on. Once we get that thin layer of epoxy applied, we are going to start building our blend. This first coat of glitter, we're gonna use our mini chunkies, and we aren't gonna go heavy coverage here. All we're doing is we are putting down the foundation of our swirl. I basically just laid that first color, which was so grateful, and I made them evenly spaced apart. Now I'm gonna go in with Milky Way, and when I do my swirls, I like to have a section of swirl where it doesn't go down all the way. So I have Milky Way that starts from the top and goes to the middle, and then goes from the middle to the bottom on the other side. Then I went ahead and took that other glitter, I believe it was Petunia, and I filled that in on the other side of where that Milky Way was placed. This isn't necessary, this is all personal preference. I just feel like it really adds depth and dimension to the tumbler. I'm gonna keep going in here with all of those mini chunkies and just really start to lay that foundation. And now we're gonna go back in with those same glitters and start to build the blend. Now that we have our mini chunkies blended and it looks actually really good at this point, we're gonna go in with that next cut of glitter. This is the in between the mini chunky and the super fine. This is the other fine cut. I believe it's a point five. I could be wrong. I'll have to go back and check, but I'll have them listed below. And now we're gonna go over top of those coordinating colors with those glitters to really start to almost like ombre these colors together even though our first coat did do a really good job but you'll see here in the end the amount of dimension and depth that this swirl has
now that we have those 0.015s down, we're gonna go in with our ultra fine glitter. I believe these are 0.008. And those again, just like the last ones, are gonna go over top of those corresponding colors and somewhat blend into the other color as we go. As you can see here, I'm going into the blue and then over into the purple with this Chick-A-L-A. And we're gonna do the same thing with each one of those colors. I know this process does take quite a bit of time, but look at the outcome. It is just so pretty and perfectly blended. You have no harsh lines. It just ultimately is totally worth it to go with all those glitters. And here's the outside look. It's amazing how different these tumblers look from indoor lighting to outdoor lighting. But once our coat of epoxy is cured underneath there, we're gonna go in with two more coats of epoxy over top. You know I love my KS Resin Liquidy Split Ultra UV Epoxy. And then we're gonna go ahead and do with the sanding of our rim before we go in with our mica swirl. So we're gonna go in with grape, we have topaz and azalea. These are all micas. We're gonna go ahead and also take Frosty, Ella, and H2O, all from Peach Yellow Glitters. At this point, we have a thin coat of epoxy on our tumbler, and now we're gonna go ahead and take some mixing cups, and we're gonna put about five mLs of epoxy in each one, and we're gonna put some of each one of those micas, as well as those three glitters, into these mixing cups. For the glitters, we're gonna put all three into one. We're just kind of blending those glitters together to create a really dimensional glitter epoxy mix. Once we get those all mixed up, we're gonna go ahead and take each one of those cups and take that popsicle stick and just brush some of the mix sporadically around the tumbler. Once I get these on, I realize I want a more stark white, so I take my white epoxy dye from Illumilite and I just go ahead and mix that into the white mica mixing cup and go ahead and then just swipe that onto the tumbler as well. That's kind of how the crafting world goes. You kind of <laughs> go off the fly and adjust based on what you're seeing right in front of you. It's totally a trust the process situation but ultimately you can shift and completely change your outlook halfway through a design. Once we get all of the mica and epoxy dye on to our liking, we're gonna take our fingers and just brush that line or those lines, if you will, that you put on those tumblers to soften them. I don't like harsh, stark lines. I like it to be very blended and flowy. So as you can see here, I just kind of take different fingers based on how much epoxy builds up onto them and keep brushing through those swipes until I get the look that I like.
Now that we have our micas and epoxy dye to our liking, we're gonna take that custom glitter mix we made and we're just gonna brush that through again sporadically around the tumbler. There's no rhyme or reason. Put it where you think looks best. I tried to put it into the bare spots, not so much over the mica and epoxy dye, but more so into the blank glitter areas. But again, you could do this however you would like. Then we're going to go ahead and take our torch and pop any of the air bubbles that may have formed. We did really mess with this tumbler and really manhandled it, so you just want to be sure to not miss that step. But look at how dimensional and gorgeous that custom glitter mix is with the micas and the epoxy dye. I just love how this one came out. Now we're going to go in with the new pearl vinyl from Tech Wrap Craft. This stuff is my favorite if you've been following me. I've been using it all the time, <laughs> but I'm going to go ahead and put the name right across the middle of this tumbler. So I did a triple layer offset. I used the blue as the bottom layer, the white as the middle, and then the purple pearl as the top. These vinyls are seriously so gorgeous. They hold the pearl look under epoxy and they just add a totally different feel from the plain you know, glossy regular vinyl, which also looks great, but in this case, it was just so perfect. When I go to lay the vinyl, I always put the handles back on. I mean, they're not screwed on, but just set it on so I can see what it will look like with the handle on. You don't want it to be under the handle or anything like that. So I always put the handle on and I like to have my tumbler sitting up and I get eye level with it when I apply these to be sure that they're straight. But once we get that on to our liking, we're gonna go in with two final coats of epoxy and now we are ready to clean up our tumblers. So I got a little bit messy when I did the mica application. And as you can see here, I got some epoxy on the plugs, which is no big deal. I just take my X-Acto knife and I just kind of swipe those right off. They come off so easily. But ultimately my handle went on with those on there, but I just didn't want to take the risk of you know, lessening durability or anything like that with leaving those on. So I went ahead and just scraped those off and then I cleaned up my rim with my X-Acto knife. And once we get that all clean, we're gonna take some acetone or 91% alcohol. I didn't get any spray paint or anything on the inside of this tumbler. So I didn't need acetone, I just used alcohol and cleaned off the inside of that tumbler. Then we're gonna go ahead and put our lid on. I don't think I showed you guys the lid in the beginning, but how fun, it's a different color lid, a different color straw, and then the handle as well is a different color. I love the color blocked look for this design. But we're gonna go ahead and then put that handle on. We're gonna take our little screws and just screw them right back on. And then our tumbler is finished. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I've done quite a few swirls on here, but this color combo, I knew I had to record. I knew I was gonna love it, and I do but it just turned out so great. You can do these swirls in any color combos. I've never done one that hasn't looked good, honestly. You can blend any colors together and ultimately based on the dimension and depth you add with your micas and your epoxy dyes, just make these tumblers stand out and be a star on their own. This one was super simple. I didn't add any leopard, but I didn't feel like it needed it. It was just so gorgeous and elegant. It turned out great. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and I'll see you again soon.